Hunchy Mamas, this is Avani from Ecstatic Earth Arts, and today I am live for my, excuse me, regular weekly Friday at 4 live, and we're doing gemstone magic today. I've been doing color magic for a few weeks now, and people were like, we need a break, do something different, so we're starting this. And I know a lot of people want gemstone magic, and I figured what better place to start than talking about clear quartz, because in my opinion, clear quartz is pretty much the the creme de la creme of gemstones because it does so many different things and can be used for so many different spells. I am just going to pull up another window new tab new tab on my tablet here so that I can be sure to see all the comments because Facebook likes to hide them on me. And then once I get going in my pre-show here, I'm going to give you guys just a little primer on gemstone magic and how you can use the stones that we're talking about. Since this is the first in the series, I figured it was a good idea to kind of start there. Um, and then after I get through that, of course, we'll move on to the really good stuff to talk about clear quartz. Hey, Discovering My Voice, we're going to be here talking about gemstone magic, especially using uh, clear quartz today. I'm just finishing getting myself set up real quick, and then I'm going to give a little primer on gemstone magic in general. Uh, and then we will hop into the stuff about quartz. Here we go. Here's the video. On my tablet, you discovered like my voice. We're going to be... Nope. Go away. Perfect. All right. Now I'm ready to hop into the pre-show. As a reminder, if you are here and you are watching, um, if you're here live, be sure to throw a hashtag live into the comments. If you are here um, watching this after the fact as a replay, please do hashtag replay. It helps other people find us, so I appreciate that a lot. All right. So pre-show, talking about gemstone magic. So... Gemstone magic is really all, actually all magic and a lot of things in paganism in general um, are really related back to the concept of animism. And if you're not familiar with the term animism, what that means is the belief that all things in nature, be it stones, trees, plants, rocks, um, etc., etc., all have a spirit, all have a soul, kind of like that. The Disney song, Colors of the Wind, you know, every rock, every tree, every creature has a life, a spirit, a name, so on and so forth. Um, baby toes are messing up my, what even happened here? Oh, I see what happened. All right. So anyway, so just like trees have a spirit or stones or, uh, you know, any other sticks have spirits. Also, of course, stones and crystals and gemstones have spirits and all of those spirits have certain vibrations, um, and energies to them that influence you know, what their properties are and how they can be used in different different types of magic and spell work. Um, if you see me moving around, like this baby loves to touch buttons. Here, little man, how about this one? This one's not attached. Oh, there you go. Oh, he's a happy boy. All right. Um, so, and then as a really interesting thing I thought I would talk about really quickly is, you know, we talk about the idea of gemstones and crystals having their own met metaphysical properties or energies. and. Um, I used to often wonder, but never had an answer to why or who determines what a stone is for, or what it does, or what its properties are. And I happen to have found out several years ago that there are actual specific people, sensitive, um, you know, psychics and spiritualists and folks that work with gemstones on a regular basis who actually get hired for this purpose. So anytime a new stone is discovered, they will effectively sit with that stone and work with it on an energetic level to determine what the energies are based on what they're getting from it intuitively. Uh, which I think says something because, you know, we all have this idea that, oh, well, uh, you know, rose quartz is for, is for this, so that's what I use it for. But truthfully, your intuition always is going to be more important than whatever um, a piece of paper or a book or a little sign in a store tells you that a stone is for. So never discredit the power of your intuition when it comes to determining the best stone for you. Um, and then the question, next thing real quick, I want to talk about the idea of how do you use your crystals? Um, one way, you know, so we're talking about clear quartz today, but, you know, after you listen to all this, the next question naturally is going to be, well, what do I do with them? How do I use them? Um, you know, so the one of the ways that you can work with crystals on a regular basis in your daily life, in your practice, is to wear them. Um, I like to wear mine as rings. Some people like to wear them as necklaces. I wear them as necklaces sometimes too, of course. Um, or you can carry them with you. Some people like to tuck them into their pockets or put them in their purse or in their wallet or in their car, again, depending on what their intention for that stone is and what they're trying to accomplish with it. 
Um, you can also put stones, of course, in things like spell jars and charm bags. Um, or place them in specific things and places depending on your intention. You know, if you're, you know, trying to, let's say that you or your significant other is a truck driver and you want, oh, just discovering my voice. This says, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm for intuition. That makes it simpler for me. Yes, it absolutely should. Hey, Ariel, glad you're here. Remember, give me a hashtag live if you're here. One, so I can see that you're here, especially on Facebook because Facebook doesn't show me who's here. And on Instagram because it helps other folks find us. If you're watching on the replay, hashtag replay. Um, and just as a reminder, if you have any questions while I'm going, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. This is supposed to be interactive. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, oh, so putting gemstones in specific places. Let's say you have a significant other who's a truck driver and you want them to stay safe while they're driving. You might put, um, again, using my intuition here, like a piece of lapis um, in, their, in their glove box. And the idea of it, because it's in the car, it's, it's, it's acting on the car. So just for example. And then of course, um, and I may or may not do another video where I talk about this later, uh, but another thing that people do is they make gemstone elixirs, which is sort of like, similar to the way that we make tea with herbs, you can make elixirs with gemstones. So those are a few quick ways that you can use your stones when you're doing your magic. Um, so that's it. So yeah, so let's let's get into it. It's about five minutes, which is exactly how long I wanted it to take. I'm sure next week I'll talk, oh, well, next time I do gemstones, which is actually not going to be next week, I will do a little bit more in the beginning about some basics of crystal magic. Probably the next thing I'll want to cover is like how to cleanse them because that's a really important, that's a really important detail. Um, again, if you're watching, please give me hashtag live, hashtag replay so I can see that you're here. I can see there's some folks on Facebook, but I don't know who you are and I'd love to say hello. Um, Oh, God, my screen rotated. Usually I have a physical piece of paper with my little outline on it so I don't forget anything, and our printer is, like, totally busted right now. So I'm using my husband's tablet instead. Um, so let's talk about clear quartz. Um, so clear quartz is a type of silicate or a silica-based stone. There are lots of stones that are silica-based, um, such as uh, amethyst, citrine, rose quartz, Aventurine, Chalcedony, Prasteolite, which is actually like a pale green amethyst, um, are all in the silicate family. And we will get to talk about those individually too, but I want to give you an idea. They're all silicates. Um, and while there's another classification of stone called feldspars, which are actually have more classifications and types of stones that fall underneath that bracket, um, silicates have the most actual physical gemstones on the planet. So it's one of the biggest groups of gemstones that there are. Um, and the quartz, clear quartz in particular is a 7 out of 10 on the most hardness scale. Um, you know, us human beings, we love to classify and quantify things. So um, we have hardness scales to tell us how hard different stones are. Obviously, most people know that diamond is like the hardest stone on the planet, so diamond is a 10. Clear quartz is a 7, which out of all of the gemstones that people generally work with is actually one of the hardest ones. And I, I felt like that was relevant to bring up because I always like to tell people that you should be very careful about what stones you store together. Um, not because they're going to energetically cancel each other out or anything, but that because if you put like clear quartz with a much softer stone, like selenite, it will actually scratch up the selenite over time, which can be really not great. So very, very hard stone. Pretty, pretty durable for the most part. Um, unless there's already a crack in it and you tossed it something hard, obviously it might break. Um, so, so other, other characteristics. Oh, uh, hey Liz, that's one of my Facebook people. Glad you're here. So one of the other characteristics of clear quartz, um, crystals in particular is that they are hexagonal, meaning they have six sides. Um, and I'm sure that there's plenty of significance we can go into on the energy of the number six and why that's relevant. Um, <laughs> the baby just farted. He's good at that. Um, and those crystals sometimes are single terminated, sometimes they're, they're double terminated. Of course, sometimes you get broken points too. Um, and then I think it's sort of interesting to mention here that um, there are also some um, microcrystalline structure quartz, which are, they're so tiny that it actually looks like smooth stone, like chalcedony is actually in that category. I know I mentioned that earlier. Um, and that gives it, like I said, a very smooth appearance. Um, and then also rock quartz. Like I know rock quartz actually grows or occurs naturally in my area. I'm up in New England, northeast of the United States. Um, so that's another variety too. Um, like for example, I was talking about single versus double terminated. Um, like many, many people may not realize this, but um, Herkimer diamonds, they're called diamonds. They're not actually diamonds. They're actually a variety of quartz that are double terminated and very, very short. 
Uh, so that's kind of a cool story. They do have some properties on their own that are a little bit different than Clear Quartz. Um, that I don't know off the top of my head, so if you want to ask me that, I don't know. <laughs> but you can Google it. I'm sure you could find it. Um, but that's just a really specific variety that I thought was really interesting. I'm also realizing that I'm, I got ready in such a rush today hey, that I um, forgot to grab one of my handouts. But when I get to the end when I want to cover that stuff, I will I will acquire it. Hopefully that binder is in here somewhere. So. All right. So that said, let's talk a little bit about the, the uses of quartz. And I know I talk about this as gemstone magic. I'm going to get there. But I think that there's a lot of value in kind of examining both the history and the science uh, behind a thing before we talk about the magic of a thing. Because oftentimes they actually relate in really interesting ways. And I think that they're, it, knowing both can kind of be a little bit of a mnemonic device to help you kind of remember when you're like, oh, I really need a stone for blah, blah. Oh, I remember this stone is used for this thing, which means it's good for this. Um, so that's why I kind of like to talk about both. But quartz in particular is actually um, what sand is made out of. <laughs> and sand is the primary ingredient that's used in glass making. Um, additionally, and I think far more interestingly, quartz is actually a really, really important ingredient in a lot of uh, ingredient. <laughs> Uh, material that's used in a lot of our modern electronics and radios, actually. So, uh, clear quartz, transparent in particular quartz, is used as an oscillator in a lot of radios, watches, and pressure gauges. And what that means is that the it helps to create a certain frequency of um, electric signal or, or, or wave, um, and it helps everything else in the system align or oscillate to that same wave so everything can kind of work collectively as a single um, unit. Um, additionally, clear quartz is used in uh, modern computers as well, and it's used uh, microscopic, oh, hold on, it's used as um, a semiconductor, um, a silicon mini, uh, mini uh, b -b 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 a silicon semiconductor that's inside the computers. And then one of the most interesting um, modern uses is kind of like my favorite because it's actually a relatively new discovery that people mystics and witches and pagans have known for ever um, that quartz can actually be also used for information storage. There was this um, experiment study research thing that was done, I think it was in 2019, where some researchers discovered that they could use quartz to store massive amounts of information on a relatively small piece of the mineral. Um, they found that they could store upwards of about 360 terabytes of data on a very small 5D disk that was probably about this size, maybe like a half dollar, which is amazing. And um, one of the things we'll talk about later is the fact that um, quartz is good for um, information storage. Again, if you're watching, because I know I've seen some of these numbers kind of fluctuate and move around, if you're here and you haven't done it yet, please give me a hashtag live. helps other folks find us. Um, same thing if you're watching on the replay, hashtag replay. Um, so anyway, so that's all the stuff I want to talk about science. I don't want to bore you too much with that, but I love that stuff. I think it's super cool. Um, but now let's talk about the magic of clear quartz. So clear quartz, I kind of joke, and I said earlier, is sort of like the master of all, of all crystals or the queen or the king of, of the mineral kingdom in a way. Oh, geez, the baby tore off a key. Good Lord. How did you manage that? How did you manage that? <laughs> there we go. So some people can see how cute you are. Well, anyway, we'll put that. No, don't touch that. Here. So, anyway, that said, quartz is awesome. So pretty much in every magical system type, whatever you want to call it, there's at least one ingredient or variety that you can use for almost anything. When you're doing candle magic, it's white candles. When you're doing herbal magic, it's rosemary. When it's gemstone magic, it's clear quartz. So clear quartz can be used for almost anything that you want. It's uh, or or I joke, it's kind of like the tofu of crystals, you know, because tofu takes on the flavor of whatever you're cooking it with. Um, you know, so it's good for lots of things. But if you were to talk about this based on we were talking about science, um, you know, the idea of it being an oscillator. So, um, oh really? Quartz is a very, it's an oscillator. So what, quartz is actually very good for projecting energy and um, transmitting energy, um, which is why 
clear, clear quartz is often used as a point for magic wands, um, which I will show you some of those later. So don't worry, I have I have plans. Um, additionally, you it can be used to, of course, store energy or store information. Um, you know, if you you know, I'll think of like, and this is a little bit silly, but think of Harry Potter. Um, when Dumbledore has a pensive and he's putting his memories into it, you can literally use quartz that way. Of course, the challenge then becomes, how do I retrieve that information? Yeah, you meditate with it and work with it and think about it. The idea is that you can stash, store and stash info in there and then it can be passed on. Um, in fact, there are some types of crystals that are famous for that very reason because they're believed to have been used for information storage during certain different um, ancient civilizations, which is really neat. Um, so additionally, clear quartz is said to enhance psychic ability and help to align all of the energy bodies, the chakra, the aura, the chakras, I should say, the auras, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there are many, many varieties of clear quartz, which is precisely the um, sheet that I am missing. And I don't wanna, actually, you know what? I can totally pull it up on this tablet. And I have it. I have it. Literally, a sheet says the many facets of clear quartz. I hope it's down here. Clear quartz. Clear quartz. Clear quartz. Clear quartz. Uh, oh, it's alphabetical, sort of. No. All right. It must be. Ah, oh, crap. All right. It's. I can't pull it up on here. Oh, hey, Stephanie. We are here talking about gemstone magic and clear quartz and just realized that I am missing one of my sheets that I wanted to use for reference, so, oh my gosh, here little man, hang out there for a second, bear with me, I'm a mess today, oh god, good lord, I went to get off the bed and everything got destroyed, Corbin, no, Corbin, no, Oh, you think you're hilarious. <laughs> Hope everybody's getting a good show. Alright, well, I don't have it. That's okay. I'll talk about what I can remember. Excuse me, sir. Oh, my God. This is such a mess. Alright, you. Thank goodness that screen is locked. I hope everybody can still see how adorable you are. Making a big mess, trying to get onto the computer. Sorry, my screen clock. Oh, well, yeah, look at that. Everybody's watching you being a bad boy. All right, let me fix this. Sorry. Anyway, as I was trying to say before I so rudely left you hanging. So, clear quartz. There are a few different varieties. Um, I, was, I mentioned before that there's a variety. Um, there are a couple of varieties that are well known for their um, information storage. One of them are called record keepers, and now of course I would be happy to show you what they look like you know, on these videos, but it would be almost impossible to see on these little screens um, with the quality of um, video. Oh my gosh. I'm like fighting off the kid, trying to get this to load back up for me. Come on. Um, so record keepers, you can tell if your crystal is a record keeper if you look at it. So you look at it and you've got the sides and you've got the points. So these facets at the top that go around and terminate up to the point, um, what you do is you can hold them up to the light. And if you see these little, they'll see, sometimes you see these little itty bitty raised triangles. We're talking teeny tiny raised triangles. And those are actually what the main characteristic of a record keeper crystal is. And it is said that again, if you meditate with that crystal, there we go, he has his keyboard again. If you meditate with that crystal, it can actually give you information. Now, who put the information in it? Hard to say, something that you'll only be able to discover by actually working with a crystal. Um, another common type are Lemurian um, crystals. Um, I believe that those are the ones that, um, so I said that the record keepers are the ones that have the triangles on the top part. Lemurians are um, ones that, um, if you look on the sides, I believe. Hey, Joel Tara, glad you can make it. We're here talking about clear quartz today. Um, I'm just kind of moving into some different types of clear quartz, and then I'm going to show you guys some things, I, some wands and what have you that actually have clear quartz in them so you can see it yourself with your own eyes. Um, 
so right Lemurian I believe that and they're usually etched so the sides that go down this way you'll see that there's actually texture or looks like etching on them that are actually is actually natural that is also said to um, be crystals that have information stored in them think of sort of like a record like an old-fashioned vinyl record it has those ridges on it the idea is that the you know the the raised structure on the crystal is what's indicative of the fact that it's storing energy um, and there's other crystals that are called tabby crystals and they're usually very very flat um, you know so you have two two faces so to speak that are um, very or much wider oh geez oh gosh all right you cannot have this anymore you are destroying it I don't even know how oh, my god daddy's gonna kill me <laughs> You can't play with that anymore. Come over here. Play over here for a minute. Get into trouble. All right. So, um, and then I talked about Herkimers earlier, but I'll say it again because I'm not sure if I have all the same people with me now. Herkimers are actually a very, very small, double terminated um, clear quartz that are not actually diamonds. They're made out of quartz. No, excuse me, sir. You, you can't be over here. I'm sorry. Um, and let's see what else I have. Oh, and I have twin crystals are another one that's really cool. It's when two crystals grow right next to each other. They can be parallel, or sometimes they actually will grow at right angles to each other. Those are usually considered to be really good for working, obviously, with dualities, like, you know, working with, um, you know, doing partner work if you are a couple, or doing work within yourself, working with, you know, your shadow self, so on and so forth. Um, and that's all I can think of. Just off the top of my head, I know that there's more, but those are the ones that are most prevalent in my mind. How about, how about I give you, so that said, I am going to show you a few wands. So I mentioned that clear quartz is really good for making magic wands. So these are all wands that I have made. These are all wands that are available for purchase. So if you like them and you are interested in buying them, um, or you just want a price, feel free to drop a, a comment in the comments below. Or of course you can always send me a PM, DM, whatever the right abbreviation is, depending on the platform that you're watching me from. Let's see. The first one I want to show you is this one. So this is one wand. So this up here, of course, is the clear quartz. This one also has, I believe, uh, let's see, it says on here, um, bloodstone. So these are the, these little stones here are bloodstone, and there's a bloodstone on the back end as well. And that and this the the shaft is made out of um, oak. Yes, Vivica, there is a baby, and actually. I know I can't see my own screen, but you can see here he is eating because it's the only way I can keep him happy right now. Um, so real quick um, here, oak is supposed to be excellent for healing and protection magic. Um, clear quartz, it says here, amplifier of spiritual and magical energy, but you know that because we just talked about it. Um, and then the embellishment stone, and the, I call this the root stone, the one that's on the butt end here, um, is excellent stone for prosperity and success magic and it helps to calm anger and fear. So there's this guy and this one is 65. There's one. I also have, here's another, here's another one. You can see our nice quartz crystal at the end or at the top rather. So this one has, uh, looks like red jasper as the embellishment stone and actually unikite on the back end excuse me sir thank you um so and the wood on this is lilac we had a little tiny lilac bush that got cut down in our yard so i salvaged the wood from it lilac is an excellent wood for magic involving love romance and passion unikite is a heart chakra stone that heals the heart and mind and red jasper is a grounding stone that helps to balance the emotions so I love Unikai. It's actually one of my favorite stones. Okay, and then this one. This is actually apple wood. And the um, embell. So you can see we've got our clear quartz at the top again. And the clear and the uh, the embellishment stones and the stone at the butt here are rose quartz. Another favorite. I mean, I have so many favorites. Like it's hard to choose. Um, apple wood is excellent for magic involving fertility, love, and healing. And the rose quartz heals the heart, promotes self-love, and fosters compassion and empathy for the self and others. I love this one. I love apple wood. It just has a wonderful feeling to it. And then finally, last one of these I'll show you is this guy. 
This is also apple wood. But the stones that are here, there's only one on one side here because it's a much larger stone. And here are lepidolite. And lepidolite is said to help clear blockages or stagnations in the energy bodies. Through this action, it increases spiritual awareness and aids in spirit world travel. So that's this one. Hey, God's Blood Moon, we were talking about gemstone magic today, especially clear quartz. You can see clear quartz here. Um, we're actually just wrapping up. I'm just doing a little bit of a show and tell of some wands I have that have clear quartz in the, t in the points because clear quartz is an excellent stone for the projection of energy. So there's this one. I love this. I think this one might be my favorite. Actually, it's hard to pick. I really just love the apple wood ones. Apple wood. Oh, hey, Onika. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I was just wrapping up, actually. And then finally, we're doing, we're talking about clear quartz and um, gemstone magic today. I know that Onika works with crystals a lot, too. And then finally, I wanted to show you, I have a few crystals here that are available for custom wire wrapping, if anybody's interested. Um, I've got four pieces I'll show you. So the first one is this little teeny tiny guy. Let's see. This little teeny tiny guy. I don't know how well you can see that. This is a really nice for your, a little dainty thing. And the cool thing about uh, this piece is it has this little um, extra blip here. So I could wrap this one so it's got the point exposed completely. Or I could do a wrap all the way around. And then I also have this guy. Very pretty. I feel like the camera is totally whiffing the quality and the prettiness of this. So this is number two, also available. This one I'm less sure of if I could do it with the point completely exposed. The baby just changed my tab on me so I can't see you guys. There we go. Um, <clears throat> But the cool thing about it, and again, I don't think the, the, the video is going to let you see, but there's some really interesting movement in the way this crystal grew that I love. Don't look at my face, it's a crystal. Well, anyway, it's a really pretty piece. And then I have this one, which is very long. And it's a crystal, but it's been ever so slightly tumbled, so it's very, very smooth all the way around. This one would have to be wrapped all the way around, I suspect. Really, really lovely piece. And then finally, I've had this piece in my wrap bin forever. Um, and I bought it because this is one of the only ones I have that actually has a hole drilled in it. You can kind of see that white across the top. Um, because I really wanted to wrap it with the tip, ex again, with the tip exposed. Are you really, you grab the, the your, oh, the baby's like trying to take all the crystals. Here, try this one. Try that one. Um, so anyway, this is the last one. This is like one of my favorites. I'm just waiting for a really good excuse to get to use this one. So if anybody's interested in a custom wrap with all of my wraps, the way it works is you guys set the price. You tell me what works for you and I will work with that. I'm all about, I love doing custom pieces. I actually have a custom piece I'm doing for someone. Um, that asked me last week for a piece of lapis, a really pretty triangular piece that I talked about in my color magic about blue live stream. So that said, that's all I have for you guys today. I will say that next week, because we have Mabon and the fall equinox coming up, I am going to be talking about, um, I'm gonna, you guys um, said that you wanted me to take a break on with color magic again. So I am going to be doing instead of crystal magic next week i'm going to be doing goddess magic next week so next week because maven is coming up really really soon i'm going to be talking about working with the goddess demeter so if you are interested in that feel free to join me i do lives every friday at four and again make sure if you're watching throw a live hashtag live hashtag replay in the comments and even if you're watching on the replay and you want to say something um, or have a question, never be, never be afraid to ask because I would love to answer. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Take care.